adding a customized button with much better than the default graphics. So when you add a button, it starts out and it defaults as a text button. Sometimes what you can do is you can create a customized button as an image button and then once you choose image button then you can navigate to the image that you want to use and then in that case I am going to now select my new one that I'm working with and I choose the up state as my first state for the button Remembering the top left corner pixel determines if there is transparency and how it treats it. So currently, we can see here is my button, and there's its rollover effect. And because it's a button, I can test movie. Oh, wrong. Test movie comes up, and we'll see up, over, down. So we see it does have its three button states, but it's not transparent yet. If I want that transpa transparency to occur, click on the button say make button transparent and then what was black not gray but black because if I go and look you'll notice that it has a little black ring in the middle of that that doesn't necessarily make sense until we look at Photoshop and notice that when I added the circle in Photoshop I intentionally let it anti-alias or smooth the edges so I have these kind of gray pixels and those do not match this black. They're not that corner black color. So those gray pixels do not then become transparent. So it only supports an on-off version of transparency, not a gradated version or a full transparency channel. Transparency is either it's opaque, it's transparent, but there is no in-between as part of that. So when we look here, we can see that's why it leaves that edge. But also notice because I added to the overstate, I added additional black, we can see how that now became transparent around the edges that isn't there before. So that's the main gist of working with a button. With the button on screen I'm going to add in a text caption. And with this text caption, I'm just going to make it transparent because I don't want the other stuff that goes with it. And I will put number of clicks. Now I'm re referencing a variable that I have not created yet but I'm putting that there so that it will then be able to hopefully do that. So now when I click on this button, I'm going to want it to execute an advanced action. Now currently I don't have any actions to choose off my list and this is something as you gain some more experience if you decide to figure out what you're trying to do, you could actually write all of your actions, create all of your variables, then make your slides, and then just assign things to it and you're up and running. But that's kind of putting the cart before the horse in the beginning when you're figuring out how this works. So that would not necessarily be the approach that most of you would want to go. So now if I click on the folder here next to advanced actions it comes up and I can now start creating actions. Now one of the things is my action needs to reference this variable. That variable doesn't exist yet but now my advanced actions window gives me an option to add that variable. So now I can add that variable in. So I can just click on variables. It will be a user variable and I will just call this variable well, first click Add New, then click, I believe it had it was plural, and I will start out with zero on it. And then I have to say I want to save that variable. Now, again, back to the previous conversation, if I'm going to make a bunch of variables, I may want to name them all with like the letter A first, just so they show up always at the top of the list. It is tedious to keep scrolling through that list when you get 50 or 100 slides in 
and a dozen or two dozen variables all scattered alphabetically through the default list of variables, that can get tiresome. So I'll hit save, close, all right. So at this point, I can double click under actions. Now I can choose things. We can see I could my action could be continue, go to, jump, blah, 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 blah. I just want it to be expression. And the expression is going to be variable. And luckily, clicks comes before CP, so it does show up at the top of the list. Clicks is equal to, and I'm going to say clicks plus a literal and I will say one. So that now says clicks is equal to clicks plus one. Oh, I need to give this an action name. Add more clicks. So it was telling me that it was incomplete because it wasn't sure what this operator was. It was default, so when I hit save it says it's incomplete. And I have to tell it on the list, I, I have to physically click on that. So now it looks like this. It puts a green over here instead of red telling me it's now ready to save this. Now I can save it. The script's been saved successfully. I can now close this. So now this button here has add more clicks on it. And on success, that if, I'm, if all is good, it's going to just keep changing <coughs> the value in my box. So we will verify number of clicks 0, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I have now created an interactive object that is tracking the number of times. Now it's not continuing on on the slide because there's nothing, this button doesn't say continue as part of its action. So there's, it's never going to leave past this button. If we remember when we looked at some of the previous examples in the fish game, it performed expression operations, it changed values, and then it had a second action which said, oh, by the way, you know, go to this slide. Right now there's no other slide to go to, but I could certainly add one. So I'll just say slide, new slide. Put a caption in here, done. Okay, there it is. But if I test movie once again, we will notice that there's nothing that tells it to ever continue on to that second slide. But I'm going to take the, the previous slide here. I will copy this, and I'm just going to paste it on this slide so we have it here as well so we can see it. If I go back into the action that's on this button, and edit it. So if I want to edit it, I can go here. I can then, at this point, add another action. Oh, don't want to do that. Whoops, wrong thing. add and now I can say continue which would continue or I could even just say jump so it won't fade this sli slide out and go it will just jump right too so I had that option that's always something to keep in mind is do you want continues or jumps I recommend if you have your slides all created first that you use jumps so that as you add extra slides in between things then the jumps are still going to be valid and go because if you rely on continue it's going to, if you put a slide in between two slides, now continue goes to that intermediate slide. So if you want it to go to a specific slide at the end of a slide or when you click on something or when a certain condition is met, you should always specify that explicitly and not depend on continues as your navigation structure. So in this case, I'm going to choose continue so it can fade out and then fade up the next slide because it has that built onto it. So I'll just say continue. And we'll say update. It's been updated. Close. Should start out number of clicks zero. If I click on it, 
click. Now it continued. And so the next slide it actually tallied up at one click. Yeah, which we saw it happen right away here because it has continue associated. But if I modify that so it's not continue, but in this case is instead Uh, jump to slide, slide two, and again, as some of you have found out, naming your slides is really helpful instead of two dash two, two dash or three dash three. But you put names, so then when you look at it, it makes a whole lot more sense. I would strongly encourage you to think about that. So if we test once more, if I click, it will automatically be on that next slide. Number of clicks one. So we're back to just the straight expression. If I click on the button, it's going to go up. And I've updated that. Now, under conditional actions, so if, and this is where we're going to add it in, so if at this point, if clicks, So we want at 15, so if clicks is less than literal 15, let's see if I can execute one of my Hoping I could assign my action that's already here. So clicks is equal to clicks <coughs> plus, oh, not variable. <coughs> One. Now my else action is going to be jump to slide slide two. <coughs> oh, gotta give it a name. So my click conditional. Save that. Close. So let's modify the script on here and choose my conditional instead of my non-conditional script. I'm just going to save this, run it. More clicks, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Number of clicks, 15, then it continued on. So working with The conditionals is a little bit more complex than just simply assigning it on, but you can now start tracking things and working with things as part of it to decide what do you need to have happen as part of it. So if clicks is less than, and one thing I do like about this is that the language that it uses, clicks is less than 15, it actually is using language, not using symbols, which makes it a little bit more digestible or understandable for non-programmers, because it you can read it. Programmers look at it and go, wow, that's really slow to read through, and give me symbols, I can read that faster. But we're used to looking at it. But if you're not accustomed to it, I think this is a little bit more straightforward. So it takes a little futzing to get everything to show up in the right field at the right time with this. And you may have noticed at times I would click off it, then double click back on it to get it to give me another option between like <coughs> literal or uh, variable. So like right here, if I click off, then just double click on that again. It now gives me an option to redecide 
what I wanted to have there. So if I choose the wrong thing accidentally, <coughs> click off it, double click on it, then choose the thing you're looking for, and then you can reselect it. So it's not necessarily the prettiest way of doing things, but it does work. I'll lower it to 10. Don't have to click as long then. <coughs> So I'm going to tweak this a little bit to encapsulate a slightly different logic. So I'm going to go into the button here, and the button is just going to have add more clicks attached to it, which just clicks is equal to clicks plus one. Now I'll we'll close that. Now my slide is going to have, and oh, let me see, and, oh, and, and I need to, um, <coughs> add a continue on to that as well so it will continue so we need to go here and add continue update that all right so now when I click on the button it adds to the click and continue it plays out the rest of the slide at the end of the slide here the action on the end of the slide we're going to have it do the conditional, which says clicks. So if clicks is, now at this point, we want to change it to greater than 10. We don't want this here. If click, and then let's modify the else. Don't need that there. So if clicks is greater than 10, jump to slide 2. Else, uh, let's see. I'm trying to see if I can get back to my beginning of the slide. Else at this point, we can um, if luck is with me here so we enter the slide it continues on stops when I click the button I click the button and it checks if not I think it's set to rewind Click. Click. So it's caught me in an endless loop, but because Click. my slide is three seconds long, we get to watch that as part of it. So it's Click. not the most efficient way of working, but I'm wishing my Click. number wasn't 10 now. Click. Go 10. Click. Not quite sure why it hit 11 and then went on. This. Oh, because it's. Yeah. Needed an equal in there to pull it off. So, again, watching the logic with it. <coughs> 